<laughs> so uh, we are having money conversations, and uh, money conversations mean that we are talking about investing. Mm -hmm. Okay, and today I'm having a guest, Mr. Moga, uh, who is going to be talking about himself. All I know is that he knows about money, and he knows about where to put money. <laughs> and that is something that uh, I am always interested in, because uh, so before you, you, you tell us who you are, I just want to say uh, that um, I have been... Um, looking at the way people are thinking about investment. And um, the other day I said that, uh, why is it that when you, talk, when you talk to people about investing, they're just talking about, about land in Mulolongo or <laughs> land in Gong <laughs> or Kitengela, <laughs> and then they are talking about uh, building rentals. Mm -hmm. Okay? So I, 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 I was like, why is it that, for example, if you look at the American market right now, or the Eastern or Eastern Europe, mm -hmm. there is a lot of investment in SaaS products. Mm -hmm. That is, everything is now subscription. Yes. Even VW yes. now has decided that so for you know. to warm your seat, they will need a subscription of twenty five dollars <laughs> every month. Yes. Okay. So I feel like that is that is that is. But anyway, so we are going to be talking with Moga about investing, and the first thing I want to talk to you, Moga, is who is Moga? Mm -hmm. uh, I know you are from Bad Consultant, mm -hmm. uh, Consult, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, so, what what do you do? Uh, are you one of those people that uh, that 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 tell people this money can be here, this money can be here, <laughs> this money? Who are you? And then we are going to be. I'm going to ask you your relationship money. Now, your personal relationship money. Mm -hmm. I always tell people that mine is a bit of a trauma because I've always thought that money is always in short supply. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, um, Michael, who am I? Mm -hmm. Um, so I'm someone who ended up in finance accidentally. Yeah. Um, at heart, I'm a thespian. I love basketball. I love sports. Um, but I figured to be able to enjoy. Yeah, you know, I was wondering. I was one, I was wondering something. <laughs> this guy is, mm -hmm. shows up here mm -hmm. talking about money, mm -hmm. and he has he has tattoos on his left hand. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that is one of the perks of having money. Yeah. The tattoo was not free. <laughs> <laughs> that's the kind of relationship I like to have with money. Yeah, okay. We'll get to that. So yes, yeah. um um Strathmore graduate. Yeah. I'm currently pursuing my MBA. I've been in the finance industry for about uh, give or take, I think nine years now. Mm -hmm. Um yeah, and I've been learning. So initially I worked for several startups, I've worked for NGOs, and now I'm in the VC world and consulting world. That's where the big money is at. Yeah. So just to high level, that's Omuga, that's what I do. I love I love high level. But high level is sometimes like, you know, when you see a plane flying in the air <laughs> and you're wondering, am I able to, you know, reach that plane and, and, and probably stop it like a matatu and go with it. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So yes. what is your relationship with money? I like to think I have a very good relationship with money. Mm. Um, especially when it is available, I command it and it responds. You see the way when I, when I, when I call you, I'm like, Jagero, you're like, yes. Yeah. So that's how um, I, I relate with money. The other thing I really like about my relationship with money is the fact that the moments when I am stressed about a certain decision and let's say things have gone left, there's something that I must have done mm. that got me to that point. So, for example, when I'm broke on the 15th or the 16th of the month, it's like, okay, let's go back and figure out the first two weeks of this month, what, what happened? So, you know, the, the, the thing with money and me is, you know, everything is pragmatic. One plus one is two. We'll never be three. So mm. if you're broke on the 15th, there's a one plus four you did there and you expected uh, a two but you ended up getting a five. So it's a question of just understanding. Mm. You know, this happens, this directly leads to this. Yes. Yeah. So uh, my relationship, to summarize it, for me, one plus one is two when it comes to money. Yeah. Yes. Do you, do you have, do you, do you, do you find it, uh, do you find it, um, uh, you know, do you fear it? Is it the, is this, the, is, is money the, the root of all evil? I don't fear it. Um, yeah. Because of the industry that I'm in, I mean, I have to work with it. Yeah. Right? Um, what I take time while, uh, while dealing with money is just taking time to think about the decisions and the impact that they will have. Because especially in the space that I'm in, a lot of money is being thrown around. So it, it takes a bit longer to recover if you make a wrong decision. Yeah. For example, VC World. Typically how VC World works is you, you, know, you invest, you put money in companies, right? Yeah. So the process of putting in money, like you have to do a lot of due diligence. You know, they will bring a pitch, you will look at it, you will do legal due diligence, financial due diligence, operations, you know. By the time you're putting in money, you've, you're basically locked for who knows how long, until maybe you exit. How many companies do we have in the stock exchange in Kenya? 
I have no idea. That number never grows year on year. In fact, companies actually drop out of it. It doesn't grow. It de- more often than not, companies are dropping out of it. What is the reason? I mean, because it's difficult to have companies IPO. It's not easy. I mean, everything has to align for it to work out, right? So, so for me, that, that, that's how I like to look, look at it. It's, you know, take your time, think about it before you put your money somewhere. And once you do, mm. stick with it. Ah, so we are going to be talking about investing for the, for the, for the, for the public. Mm-hmm. And um, like I told you that when I get, uh, and the reason why I started Money Monkey is to learn along the way. Yes. You know, talk to people and learn along the way. And uh, one of the things I've realized with the money, when I think about investing, I get a big deal somewhere mm-hmm. and I want to invest. I'm like, I'm not gon- going to give my money to some mooga that I don't <laughs> know about. I'm why just, not? Why I'm going gonna, gonna to put it in a, in, 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 in a camera. And I, and I know that this government is going to give me money next year. Next, I don't want to. I want to waste this money, you know. So, and that that's that's the reason why I think a lot of Kenyans are into real estate. Mm-hmm. When they get money, they feel like uh, that is that is where they can put their money. They get rent. They build. Um, like I was, I j- I'm just wondering if you get if you have forty units and you're getting uh, ten thousand from it. My I- un- my uncle <laughs> actually told me that he doesn't know how long it's going to take mm-hmm. for him to get even a quarter of the money he used to build in Gong. Let me let me let me just give you let me put it in practical terms numbers, right? Yeah. In investing world there's something we call coefficients. So depending on the industry, an investment has a specific coefficient. I'll give you a practical example. Yeah. Most SaaS um you know SaaS re- uh, business models there will be something for between 4 to 7 depending on the industry. Now Kenyans like investing in, for example, consulting firms and real estate. Do you know the coefficient for those ones are? It's between one and two. Basically, what that tells you is if you put in your money, the chances of it growing by one X or two X, it will take time. Yeah. It will take time. So, for example, consulting. Even if you, you come, for example, to me and you, you tell me you have a consulting business that you're selling, mm. I'll be like, its coefficient is one because I know it needs a lot of work before it grows. As compared, for example, to a SaaS model, how many people do you think VW is going to get to pay the $25 per month? A lot, I imagine. A lot of people, yes. Yeah. How many people pay for Netflix uh, subscriptions monthly? Oh, yeah. A lot. Yes. See, that's the, yes. So the, yes. The, the higher the coefficient, you know, the easier the chances that, you know, the company will actually make money and, you know, such investments actually make sense. When it comes to real estate, I think Kenyans are familiar with it because they have an uncle, an aunt, a sister, a brother somewhere who's done it, right? So practical example, you're building, you're, you're taking a, a three-bedroom apartment in Kilimani, probably go somewhere between 15 and 20 million, roughly, mm. on average. Now, Let's say the rent for such a house is 100,000 a month, right? So that in a year, it's 1.2 million. So it will take you about, what, probably, what, 15 to 20 years to get back just your money. And you've not even adjusted it for inflation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> for the l- so basically, if you want to put in your 20 million and get your 20 million at the end of 20 years, be my guest. Go with the <laughs> real estate. Yeah. That's what I tell people. Mm. Um, there's this idea that, you know, people want to do Airbnbs. Good idea, especially if you own the house. You, 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 you're brightening up. You want to do something? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Airbnb. Mm. Now, a couple of things with the Airbnb where I have an issue with it. Yeah. Um, first of all, you do not have 100% capacity always. So mm-hmm. let's start with that. Mm. And then two, um, there's breakages, there's damage. There's a bunch of things you have to deal with. So, you know, people look at it and assume w- what we call best case scenario. Assuming that this house will be filled 100% of the time, I'll be charging maximum fee for the time, I will make this amount of money. And we all know in business that does not happen. Yeah. So, again, it, it comes back to the question is why is someone investing? Because that should basically determine how they invest their money. Mm. Yes. So, so, so then the... the, the the question then is how how do people how do people expand mm. into into other areas because i feel like like i have been actively looking for funds for the last let's see uh, 3 years mm-hmm. and what i realize is that people do not do not know mm-hmm. other w- where they can put money mm-hmm. you see uh somebody has as a 7 30 million mm-hmm. they want to invest it but they really don't know so how do you how do you Obviously, our s- schools didn't do do any 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 you know our schools. I don't know whether what what they teach in uh, when you when you when you when you when you go to have to to school and learn finance, then you are taught investment. Mm-hmm. But if you went to do agriculture, mm-hmm. 
you are not taught investment. They, they might teach you just to If you are a biologist, you are not taught investment. Yeah. So how do you think people would start learning mm-hmm. how to invest? Okay. Yeah. Um, so let me let me let, let me look at it from from a very uh, basic uh, way. There's a reason we don't eat ugali and and skuma wiki every day, for example. Yeah. Let's say on Monday you'll eat ugali and skuma wiki. On Tuesday it will be spinach and something. On Wednesday it will be rice. On Thursday it might be chapati. There's a reason for that, right? Mm. Uh, first of all is a uh, uh, theory of diminishing returns. The longer you eat the same thing, the, mo- the it becomes boring and more. Over time, one week you're done with it, right? Yeah. So that's the way I like people to look at investments, just to begin with, right? So you can't you, you can't look at it and want to do the same thing over and over and over again. I'll give you a practical example. Do you remember when we had quail eggs? Um, yes. Yes. What happened? Was that a pyramid or was that investment? No, it was not a pyramid scheme. So <laughs> <laughs> it was not a pyramid scheme. So it's theory of uh, supply and demand. If you have a lot of demand. Um, the supply, you know, the price of the supply goes up. But if the supply becomes more than the demand, it drives the prices down. So the guys who actually got into uh, quail eggs early, they made their money. Yeah. I, I would like, to, I would like, because I know someone who did, and I know they made their money. Then it gets to a point now, the price is like, you know, twenty five percent of what it was before. Then it beats the point, right? So back to basics. You can't be investing in one thing all over again. So we call it diversification in finance. So yeah. y- y- first thing I tell people who want to invest is. Think, just sit down with a piece of paper. Ask yourself, the people that I know, which areas are they, um, you know, do they have expertise? Uh, 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 l- let me be practical. Mm. My parents, so I come from a farming background. My parents uh, farm quite a bit. Yeah. So growing up, naturally, I got to learn about farming and specifically sugarcane and maize. So I'm like, okay, we are comfortable in this, so we can do that. But now I'm farming something else. I'm farming watermelons. I'm farming tomatoes. So there's a possibility that, for example, the tomatoes will not do well, as yeah. they often do. You know, tomatoes are tricky. Very, yeah, very, very, tricky. very tricky. But, yeah. for example, the watermelons will do well. So, you know, you're diversifying the risk. So, you know, first of all, don't do the same thing over and over again. You know, um, diversify your investments as much as possible. Um, but And then there's a point you, you raised about, you know, people not knowing where to get money for investment or put their money, the money they want to invest. Yeah. It's very easy to um, sell someone an investment. If it's the right person and the timing is right, they will give you their money. Because what I usually look at is what is the value add? What is the value proposition? If I come to you and tell you, I will give you, I want, uh, kindly give me 10,000 shillings, I will give you a brand new Jeep. Mm-hmm. You will auto- automatically take that deal. You'd rather even borrow that 10,000 shillings because the value that I'm giving you in terms of the proposition I'm making is much more than the money that you're giving me. So that's the way to look at investments. If you want someone to give you their money, sell them a value proposition that is more than the money they're giving you. Mm. They will quickly give it to you. Mm. Um, in terms of where people should put their money, I would say put money, well, two things. One, if you want to have control of that money, then probably put it in an area that you you, you have some expertise in. So for example, there are people who invest in the stock market. You know, you can't be telling your trader to you know sell, buy shares if you're not researching and, and reading what's going on in the markets, right? So you have to have, but if you want, for example, to put your money in areas where, you know, you have no, you know, no control over, you just want your return, your check at the end of the period. A couple of things. One, figure out how much return is, is, is good enough for you. Mm. For example, someone who puts their money in a bank, in a deposit account, depository account, then they're told, I'll give you 7.5% at the end of the year. Now, if you're working with 1,000 shillings, how much is that? So then, then again, it means if you do not have control, then... It has to be either a lot of money or the rate of return has to be much, much higher, right? There are, there are a lot. I whenever I hear about investment as a as a as a citizen of this country, mm-hmm. I'm hearing it from people who are already doing it. <laughs> okay, so uh, the other day there is somebody that was telling me that they are doing forex trade mm-hmm. and they are really doing well. I know that ten years ago I did forex trade. I got money from my from my friend with whom we were with in high school. And then uh, he started a pharmacy and he gave me money to do forex trade. I had no idea how to do forex trade. I was actually told by somebody that's lucrative. And I went to my friend and I told him that it's lucrative. And he believed me. <laughs> and he gave me 18,000 Kenya shillings. Mm. And in one month, we didn't have that money. The good thing is that he, he sort of saw through it and said that this guy actually got the money from me. He was not defrauding me but I think he was defrauded by the system. Mm-hmm. So we lost that money. 
and he, and he counted his losses so, kila mtu akajia so, akaenda nje yake <laughs> so and then and then i hear now people doing um, the sort of marketing things the marketing it's it's i don't know whether i should call it at this point pyramid scheme like you are you're going to put money here and then after some time you get money back tenfold or, you know we know how it goes let, let me ask you something you is, know, the, is the banking system a pyramid scheme the banking system is weird <laughs> <laughs> The bank the uh, banking system is is a legit pyramid scheme. Mm-hmm. Why? Why do you have a pyramid scheme? <laughs> it's 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 there are things going on there that people don't understand. But then the the reason why I don't consider a bank a pyramid scheme mm-hmm. is because they have put some deposit with the central bank. Okay. And the central bank and the central bank has told them mm-hmm. that this money that you're collecting from folks it can never get lost. So probably that's why is, I don't is that fact or that is that okay. is that I, I, I was at Chase Bank and <laughs> I, I was I was I was a customer at, mm-hmm. a client at Chase Bank when it went down it went with my money so I don't know so there's something banks call CR so it's basically yeah. they're required to keep a, a fraction of uh deposits in the bank yeah um there is also a percentage where they can actually use to lend money basically how banks get money to lend people is you deposit money they use your money to lend to me yeah what basically that means is if both me and you are let's say we are the only customers and we request for money at the same time we both can't get the money yeah have you had instances where for example you go to the bank and they tell you um deposits beyond this amount they you told to they, 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 they told me they told me once that i could not withdraw ten thousand dollars yes yes and they have a reason do you know what the reason is Every financial um, system or anything is held together by a set of principles. Mm-hmm. So the central bank for example is there to safeguard those very principles. Yeah. So every pyramid scheme it was held by a set of principles that got to a point that could not hold. Yeah. The, the people who are there for example everybody who gets into a pyramid scheme um let's say the earliest people they usually get their money back. Hey, we've seen them a bunch of them. They usually get their money back. Now the issue comes where for example the people become too many for the system to handle. Then it fails. Mm. Anyways, I, 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 think, I think I think I think I think I think I agree with you, but I also di- ag- disagree with you that moving away from the bank, I think some 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 investment some investment uh you know uh, institutions mm-hmm. are set to fail. So for example, yeah, which give me an example. Like 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 where they tell you that okay, you give you give us 30,000, we'll be giving you 15,000 after every two weeks. Now they use the the people that are coming in mm-hmm. to pay out these guys and these guys then spread the noise mm-hmm. that you know get get give these guys the money and they pay you guys for the next three months mm-hmm. and they, they know very well that by the fourth month they have nothing and then they have collected enough to run away. <laughs> And this is, I always tell people now, you don't have to have a finance background to be able to do this you just need a spreadsheet oh, forget even a spreadsheet if you don't have a computer mm. let's take a piece of paper and write it down just high level every organization for example has costs right so they're telling you that they're bringing in people uh, you can't put in 30,000 for example every two weeks they give you um, 15,000 yeah so in a month they've given out 30,000 but you only gave them 30,000 now in a month they've given out 30,000 and they will keep giving you this 30,000 yes. for, the for the next for so for, for, ask the, yourself, for the rest of the money coming from so uh, bear with me so at the very top we have income 30,000 from you right um at the bottom we have 30,000 every month and they will give this to you for eternity so where is it coming from so if you invest in a business that is set to fail from the beginning who is at fault they are saying <laughs> muga got his and he's and he's still <laughs> getting his why are you his? believing them why are you believing them everybody's bank account is personal last <laughs> night <laughs> Even an organization, it's personal. I guess the reason what the, the question I'm asking you, Omoga, by beating around the bush, mm-hmm. is that where do I read? Where do I get the correct information? Mm-hmm. Do I go to a financial consultant like Muga? Do I go and read it in the in the internet? Mm-hmm. Where do I where do I I have money in my account before I start giving out money? Or if I am if I am if I'm having a, a blue chip job mm-hmm. and I'm earning 1.5 million and um, my 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 costs per month is just about 700,000 i have all these things mm-hmm. all this money remaining in my hands what, do, you do, what do i do with them and where do i get where do i go to source for the information that i need to invest this money so there's a way th- two ways to look at it so if you're looking for an individual to help you out um there's a couple of things you need to be on the lookout for so for example you know 
which funds has this person handled? Which deals has this person sourced and handled? If you can't find them, I'm not saying, you know, that they are not as good, but, you know, you need to look at them maramili. Like, yeah. <laughs> is this person like... So, for example, you can't be selling water and drinking wine. So, for example, you can't be selling me that you, uh, you're you doing investments and you're doing very well, but I can see it when we, you know, come for a meeting, you're struggling. Right? Yeah. So, I would say check the credentials of whoever you go to for financial advice really carefully. Mm. If they say they are CPA, let them give you, you know... If they CPA have said that they have handled one billion, they're struggling to pay 600 bob at Red Zone Blue for chapati. for chapati. Now we have a problem. <laughs> now we have a big problem. And even if they say, for example, you know, I've worked for multiple companies that had money, you know, this, are, this is information that should be readily available. Mm. You know, if they have referees, you know, you know, you know, do, take, your due diligence, take your time, do your due diligence. The problem with people is, you know, we are lazy. Mm. You know, we just want we want to make money, but probably, we probably, probably we don't really know. <laughs> this thing is all confusing. It, it, it is very basic. So, for example, if it is an individual that you know um, you, you're going to, basic, just ask them for their CV. Their CV <laughs> has referees and places they work for. You know, some of the things they've done, some of the achievements. You know, they ask for that. If it's an organization, for example, I founded a company called uh, Bad Consult, and we one of the things we actually do is asset management. We you know we advisory for asset management. Now. Some of the members on the team, if you ask for their CVs, you know, they've worked in specific places. Whatever they've done is documented. Yeah. So, you know, I- when we tell you, for example, we have a breadth of experience, we are not just saying words, yeah. <laughs> you know, the experience is there. Now, the issue comes whereby someone goes, you know, and, and claims that, for example, they have 30 years of uh, experience in the finance sector. You know, you come, you don't do your diligence, you give them the, your money, then they misadvise you. Because even them, they are persuaded by whatever they're telling you, but it ends up being the wrong advice, and then you lose your money. Now, who's mm-hmm. at fault? Do they are they are they are they losing your money? Are they losing your money, or or or, or your money getting lost? What am I saying? They don't know what they are doing, or they are trying to steal from you. There, there are there are predictable, not predictable. There are um, proven ways um, of investing, especially when it comes to big money. For example, right now I'll tell you a couple of things that are hot. FinTech, for example. You know, M-Pesa will keep being M-Pesa for the longest time. Um, there's a bunch of things. A lot of SaaS solutions are coming up. And, you know, uh, it's, it's a new thing, right? So th- there are specific sectors that are good, and then there are those who just like putting money in things that they know. <laughs> yeah. Real estate and stuff. Yeah. Now, what happens is every once in a while, the system gets a shock. The banking f- uh, sector, for example, in Kenya, Chase Bank, Imperial Bank, if you remember... And there are people who actually had, um, you know, the, the money in there, for example, locked um, a stamp deposit for a period of time. Now, that is a safe investment in a wrong, not in a wrong, in, um, in an unsecure um, 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 instrument. You end up losing your money. So there's a bunch of things. Again, the idea is just to diversify your risk because mm. you, your risk will never be 100%, you know, absent because, in fact, they had the risk, they had the return. That's why, for example, that pyramid scheme, they will tell you 30,000 every month. That's a 100% return in a month. Yeah. But if you go, for example, to be because it's really high risk. But if you go, for example, to our um, uh, central the treasury bills, they will tell you, you know, the rate will be much, much lower, seven point five, eight percent, right about there. So again, it's what is your risk threshold? Mm. What is your risk threshold? What is your risk threshold? Do you do you put money in risky places? Um, but the, the idea is that you don't even know it is risky until it is risky, <laughs> until you can see what is what is what is becoming uh, what what has become of your of, of your, your of your money. Mm. And the other thing is that um, sometimes you know, <clears throat> I've always thought that investing. If you invest in something, surely you are going to get something back. Mm. Turns out. It's not, not necessarily all the, the time. case. Not necessarily the case. Yeah. Not necessarily the case. I'll give a practical example. So, watermelons are agriculture is very interesting. So, watermelons are funny. Let me just talk about this because it's very. I I, I I I I tend to dislike agriculture. Why? Because, because it's just, you know, for me, I think that agriculture you need to the the the, the everything needs to be cor- to be to be to, to align. be to, to align. <laughs> for example, my my brother at home is usually doing this tomato business okay mm-hmm. and he's relying on nyakach rain which is not which is not very which, which is very unpredictable yes. so he plants like right now my sister has planned huku kwenye naishi but then the rains have now stopped now what happens and so now the the entire thing is going to dry up mm-hmm. and you have nothing Basically, so money. so for me i've always thought like agriculture you need to do it to do it the Israeli way, but then it is very expensive to do it that way. Who says it's very they, expensive? Because, because for example, it's very expensive to acquire uh, 
this this thing the the the, the dome the dome mm-hmm. for yes. what is it called the greenhouse, the greenhouse yes the greenhouse mm-hmm. and then you have to get the sprinklers mm-hmm. and then you you have to get the 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 the, the fertilizer and then you have to get this I, i i and i feel like sometimes something that you just can't do alone like you can do the subsistence part of it, part of it but, but then when you want to now do proper farming you you quickly find out that it's not affordable now it depends again i say knowledge is power so i'll give you a practical example yeah watermelons uh, they need money quite a bit you have to water them four to five times a week so that basically that is every day that is every other day so it basically deals you can't survive on you know uh, natural rain you need um, to irrigate your farm right um, and then to, to irrigate your farm you need to sink a well and sinking like sinking away is 1.5 million yes. 1.5 million how, and then and then uh, and then a greenhouse is 300 and something thousand, thousand yes and then and then 185,000 <laughs> from sun culture <laughs> to get the drip system the question then I becomes mean, the question then becomes if you're investing are you investing do, do you want quick returns because i can tell you for example agriculture is not something if you're going to do it seriously it's not something you you know just do you know you throw like 20,000 shillings there and hope it will become 100,000 it's not the case But agriculture is one of because it's high risk it is high return. But masses are always at the, at, on, on that range of 20,000. That is what the masses are. Yeah. I mean I'm not talking about Muga who is going to put in 3 million. I'm talking about so that person that, that only has 10,000. Even that 20,000. You know what people nowadays are doing and yeah. they have a bunch of banks that they actually are able to support you. All they need you to do is show consistency in terms of placing deposits for investment in a specific account. After five or six months they give you a loan. You tell them okay, you come up with a proposal, you tell them okay, so I want to go and do one to and even organizations nowadays are doing that. I will we'll explain this to you. <laughs> this is this is shocking. I don't know what so, you're saying. If you tell tell me that. So let's say for example in a month you can only afford to, you know, spare maybe 10, 5, 10,000 shillings. That's fine. Yes. You go to an institution there's a bunch of them right for purposes of marketing because they have not paid me I will not mention that <laughs> we, will <Yeah>. <laughs> we will google um, we will but what go- basically happens is you go to them they need to see your commitment in terms of just depositing money into that account and then you come up with an agreement maybe it's four months maybe it's six months so long as they see the consistency when you're ready for money you need like credit let's say you need 2 3 400 000 shillings you come up with a plan you go to them they finance your business yeah from from every shilling they finance your business of course with an agreement that you know once your business um you know matures and you know you you get xyz you pay them in this um particular way and such businesses nowadays they actually accept and and that is and that is any business so long as Now, you specific, so long so long as so long as you can put the 20000 for the next six months specific organizations choose specific sectors so there are those that for example will choose agriculture based uh, businesses only there are those that will choose anything that is solar related so it depends or again on the organization i mm. think it's something people can look at because it's something that is is within reach right it's within reach i think a lot of people maybe have not gone in that direction because they do not know that it exists forget even that people who have land but do not have the the resources to actually till it nowadays they're doing a lot of grants mm. especially because you know it, it's it's one of the biggest pillars for example for countries like Kenya to become food secure in the next 5 to 10 years so it means governments and you know through agencies that they partner with they have actually availed a lot of cash mm. as grants mm. this is not even money you have to pay back yeah we 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 are coming to the tail end of this conversation but i want i want i wanted you to to spell it out properly when somebody wants to start investing uh what can i invest in in 2023 going forward with how much what what's your what's your what's your what's your starting point with how much one of there is no starting point <laughs> one of there is no starting point you know you know people are, people are going to people are going to watch this video uh-huh. are people who are who, who are who are having 200 shillings in their pocket Which is there fine. are people who have 1 million in their pocket mm-hmm. i mean this is it's it's i am coming to muga and i'm telling you muga this you the government of kenya has come to you and tell you we like the way you think mm-hmm. we want you to go and give direction to all these people mm-hmm. about how they move fr- from now on and start having the mentality of investment mm-hmm. show them what are this what are they supposed to be doing mm-hmm. from now henceforth mm-hmm. yes i know it's a broad question but that is the question let me, let, 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 <laughs> let, 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 let me try and, and give a broad answer also yeah uh, to the broad question that you have asked <laughs> yeah um don't invest in anything in something you do not have enough information about yeah so typically for me because um for example i'm passionate about consulting i like finding out about you know companies and just you know how they run it i like it when my brain ticks 
So, you know, I'll go and do a lot of research, um, for, for, for example, about companies that you're about to put money in. Just, um, so I, I would say take your time, look at what is within your environment. So, for example, if I'm up country, I can't be thinking about real estate. Real estate, gani ushago, which one? Mm. You see? But when they, I'm, they pay 400, 400, 400 shillings, shillings for, 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 for a month for a ref, for how, and you build the house <laughs> using how much. So, for example, automatically real estate goes out of your <laughs> thought process, right? Yeah. But what is available? Farming is available, right? Fishing can be available. So I'd say, look at your environment, make sure you understand it. If you say you want to go into farming, how much does a, a, a boat cost? How much is the engine that you put at the back? Oh, right? How much are the fishing nets? Now, anything that is around you, make sure you're practical. Now, if you're in Nairobi now, you see now that's a different ball game altogether. Because Nairobi or any major city, for example, you know, the sky is the limit. Yes. Mm. So do your research, look at your environment, Look at um, how much it would take for whatever investment you want to go into. Run with it. Yeah. Yes. There's a lot of there's a lot of there's a, a lot of schemes going on. How do you know a scheme that is not going to profit you? You know, if the deal is too good. First of all, yeah, you think twice. So, for example, there's a reason why even even companies in the stock exchange, as much as they make the likes of Safaricom, they make billions and billions. Mm. They not give um, returns of hundred percent. Not necessarily because they cannot, <laughs> but it is not uh, sustainable, right? So, you know, the, 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 the returns should be reasonable. Anything that is above 30, 40 percent, mm. unless it is agriculture, because agriculture, again, high risk, very, very high return. So agriculture can even do you two, three, four hundred percent. Mm. But if it is not something that is practical, if they're telling you they'll be paying you 15,000 shillings every two weeks and you can't tell where that money is going to mm. come from, mm. from their business model, mm. uh, it's most likely a lie. No. The last question. There is no shame in, in selling yourself. Mm -hmm. What do you do and what can people come to you for? <laughs> <laughs> I wear so many hats. I wear, yeah. I, wear, I wear a bit of hats. So, for example, for Bad Consult, I'm um, just a founder uh, and the advisor. So there's a whole team of people who, you know, who run it, um, operations, finance, everything. Um, right now, I'm, I'm, I'm into investing. Yeah. So um, I work for a VC company called, um, it's called Gulit. And the reason why I enjoy working for Gulit is because I get to see a lot of things. Mm. Because now you see companies come to you and, you know, they want you to look at what they have to offer, the value proposition. And if you like it, you put money. Mm. That gets my head ticking. Yeah. So I like it when my head ticks. So if, if I, to sell myself, anything that makes my head tick, it's something that I'll actually look into. Yeah. yeah. And so to our audience, uh, you know, thank you very much. And until the next, the next video, cheers for now. <laughs>